Hello and welcome to edition 46 of the Food Safety Fridays webinar program. My name is Simon Timpley. Today we have Vladimir Suchinsky, Project Manager at Quality Austria Centre. Uh, Vladimir is back again to do a presentation, Internal Audits as an Employee Awareness Tool. We all have internal audit programs, I hope we do, and uh, Vladimir is going to be giving us some tips on how to get the best of them out of them to, to drive continual improvement and help meet requirements for auditing. So we'll uh, we'll say hello to Vladimir in a minute. Just to tell you a, um, a little bit about today, we've got obviously the presentation, we'll have some Q&A, we've got some polls that we'd like you to partake in. It is being recorded today. Um, 24, within 24 hours, we'll send you the recording, the slides, the certificate, everything. So don't worry about that. If you're registered today, well, you must be, or else you wouldn't be here, then you will get all that bundled up and sent to you via email within 24 hours. I'd like to say thank you to the sponsors, Safe Food 360, FSSC 22000, Metal Toledo, and Trace Analytics. These kind of businesses support this venture and help to bring these uh, webinars to you free of charge each week allow you to get some free education and a free certificate of attendance wow fantastic this is edition 46 today uh, i'd like to head over now to vladimir just to say hello hi vladimir how are you doing hello everybody i'm doing very great it's nice. perfect nice to see you uh, and you're wh where are you vladimir uh, I'm in uh, Serbia, in Belgrade, <laughs> in my uh, office of Quality Austria, ready to, to speak about some internal audit. Great. And uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, Vlad, uh, if you can get your presentation ready, I'll just talk about next week's okay. webinar. See you shortly. Right, next week we've got a subject that uh, we've not covered before um, food safety horizon scanning um, now this is focused on obviously threats trying to understand and look at what threats might be uh, appearing on the horizon for our business so that then we can make strategies and plans to prevent those threats from becoming a problem for our business uh, and that's with Ian Wright, uh, Technical Manager, NSF Training and Education Services at NSF International. Uh, it's not next week, if I did say that, it's actually in two weeks time on the 29th of April. Uh, we've got a week off next week. And Ian's motto is stay informed, stay ahead and stay safe. So that's food safety horizon scanning in two weeks. Okay. Uh, for now, that's all from me. We'll, I'll pass you over to Vladimir Suchinsky, and uh, I'll be back for the uh, polls and things shortly. Okay, see you soon. Okay, Vladimir. Okay, thank you, Simon. And hello, nice to be here with you today. And thank you all, Food Safeties, for logging into this presentation, and also IFSQN for this great opportunity, giving all of us place to share and to learn. And also, thank you, Simon, for being our host for these uh, great uh, webinars. So, if you will, I think that a lot of you know me from uh, last year, but for those who, who don't, I'm Vladimir Suchinsky. Uh, currently, I'm an uh, auditor and trainer at uh, Quality Austria, also project manager. And uh, before that, I worked for the Les company as a food safety operation associate, and uh, I performed more than 500 uh, food safety audits and trained more than 1,000 uh, employees in, uh, in uh, the Les Serbia. And I was responsible for three countries and 362 stores at that time. Now I have more than three, 300 audits as, as in different standards, like uh, audit, I'm also auditor for uh, ISO standards uh, that are not connected with the food, but in food in ISO 22000, FSCC 22000, HCCP, etc. Also, I'm very proud to, to say that I'm a presenter in IFSQM from 2015 with the different uh, uh, thematics that we spoke also last year. And this year also we will talk about that. And also I'm an associate lecturer for sanitary engineering. Uh, something about to say about Quality Austria is that uh, Quality Austria is a limited company for training, certification and evaluation. It started operating in 2004 
and it has a close relationship with the partner organization like IQNet, AOQ, FQM, and that this enables the mutual exchange of topical and global know-how. It has also 50 partner and member organization own offices and exclusive partners, and Polish Austria is also represented on site in Eastern and Southeastern and South Europe, Asia as well in South and Central America. Also for Quality Austria Center, it is a regional partner located in Belgrade in Serbia, and it is responsible for countries like Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, Croatia, Bulgaria, etc. Quality Austria covers the three business areas of certification, uh, evaluation and validation, provides training and individual certification as well as information, expert knowledge and service. And it has more than 1,000 auditors, trainers, and assessors, and also technical experts that combine some know-how specific to standards and sector with a significant focus on practical issues. Okay, that's for, for the beginning, but today let's focus on our uh, subject, and today we are going to talk about internal audits and the use of the same as employee awareness tool. So, till now we spoke about internal and external trainings, about different projects with employees engagement and all this because of one goal and it is awareness improvement. So I will show you how you can use process of internal audit that uh, I'm sure you all, you all perform in your company, also as a tool for awareness improvement. And through this presentation you will learn or refresh knowledge about internal audit, main parts of the same. You will, we will talk about internal procedure, program defini and defining of auditors, planning, using of checklist, reporting, and getting goals at the end of the process of internal audit. And through these different topics, uh, we'll show you uh, employee engagement, and you will be sure how to use internal audit as an awareness tool. But before we continue, I would like uh, to know how many of you there listening are uh, an internal audit team member. So please, Simon, set up the pool and for all listeners, so please click the answers in the next few few minutes. Okay, I've, I've set that simple poll in the sidebar. Are you an internal audit team member? Uh, yes or no? Um, and we are seeing it's about 80-20 maybe 75 25 yes no so okay that's perfect yeah the majority are, are an internal audit team member so the majority is an internal audit team member that, that's that's perfect because for them they will uh, learn how to use the the things that they already use through through internal audits just to implement some additional things like uh, employee awareness and maybe to widen their knowledge, but for the 25% that are not uh, an internal auditors, they will learn how to also build up an internal auditing process. So for the, for the beginners, let's say, uh, if you look for definition of internal audit, it is said that the role of internal audit is to provide independent assurance that an organization, risk management, governance, and internal control process are operating effectively. So what this exactly, exactly means? It means that internal audit is process that you and your team are performing in company to make sure that procedures and controls are in place, also to make sure that companies operate according to regulative of uh, your country. An internal audit is process that needs to be independent as also the internal auditors. So, so that results of internal audit are clear and useful for defining of future steps and goals. So if we look at existing standards, we can see that internal audit is a must. So please to remember that internal audit for, for standards is, uh, is a must. And what did I did? So I wanted to show you uh, that internal audit is also main requirement, not in not just in uh, food standards, but also in ISO 9001 2015. I think that in some previous webinars uh, we mentioned about connection in ISO 9001 2015 with ISO 22000, and 
but what I here want to mention to you is internal audit and as in ISO 9001-2015, uh, also internal audit is a main requirement for other food safety standards from ISO organization or GFSI recognized. So you cannot escape the internal audit process, but uh, the thing you can do is that you can use it more wisely to improve not just the process in organization, but also employees. So on this slide, I collected just the information from the standards to show you that internal audit is mentioned as main requirement. So you can see for IFS, for BRC, for ISO 22000, internal audit is also mentioned in, in some of the points of that uh, standards. And... Uh, According to demands, and if you read mentioned standards, you will see main elements of internal audit. Also, you will see the need of existing document or information, even a procedure for internal audit. Okay, so next thing to mention is the, what, what are the main parts of internal audit? Main parts of the internal audit, according to mentioned standards, are audit program, methods, criteria, scope, auditors, and frequency. And in next slides, I will talk more about main parts of audit. So you can get knowledge on how to organize one internal audit, but also I want to show you how you can improve employee awareness through each step. Also, I would like to talk just about one thing, and it, it is that I mentioned on previous slide, it is that information of internal audit or procedure of internal audit. So the next thing I want to mention is internal audit procedure. So internal audit procedure, I would like to refer only to these two standards for new ISO 9001, 2015 and IFS food. And when you look at these standards, it is said that you need to retain documented information or it should be documented according to IFS as food. In any of these cases, there is no mentioning of need for existence of internal audit uh, described procedure or written procedure. So this is something I want you to remember and I will discuss with you on this topic later. But before that, please, if you can answer just one more question and someone will open this, this next question. So in your uh, in your company, do you have written and documented internal audit procedure uh, that you use? Yeah, I've set the poll in the sidebar. Do you have a documented internal audit procedure in your organization? And the results are um, overwhelming. Yes, 90% and no, 10%. So vast majority, again, have a documented internal audit procedure. Okay, this is uh, the the result that I was uh, expe I was expecting because uh, majority has already implemented standards uh, through the years and in standards it was demanded to have uh, like written procedure, but uh, in these now standards you don't have to have a procedure in Britain. But me, as uh, according to my experience in auditing and trainings in in many companies, I could say that. You don't need documented procedure according to implemented standards, but it would be useful if you are setting up the system for the first time, of course, or if you want to meet the employees with the whole process of internal audit. So internal audit procedure can be made a simple flow diagram, just describing the inputs, outputs for each step and also responsible persons. But also internal audit procedure can be the guidance for defining of internal audit program. And this is practically the next thing that we are going to talk and maybe the main thing of the internal audit, it is the internal audit program and the characteristics of the same. So when we look at internal audit program, first thing that we should notice is that program must follow the need for continual improvement and that could be performed through well-known steps like plan, do, check and act. In step of planning, you will need to have authorized internal audit process. And for this, you will need to ask it from top management. So here, important thing to do is to establish goals. Uh, they could be defined by or with top management. Uh, also to define extent of eternal audit, one department, whole organization, one location, every location, few points or all points of standard, etc. 
So in this step of uh, plan, you can work on top management awareness. So uh, sometimes, or, or from my experience, in many cases, top management looks at the internal audit as just formality that must be done, and the result does not mean anything. So planning is a good time to influence on top management and to engage them to define goals for internal audit and make them think about auditors show them the importance of results and maybe make connections with the financial aspect so th that will make them engage for sure but also aware of internal audit importance and aware of importance of implemented standard so this is the the first step where you can act really really good act on top management uh, awareness so in do part you will have to uh, schedule audits or to de define internal audit plan to define auditors and evaluate them and here you need to think about auditor competencies and uh, about auditor competencies i will speak uh, in next slide so uh, the next thing here you will you will need to select also team for auditors in check step you monitor and review and that means to define corrective actions or opportunities to improve and next steps are to communicate the results and plan for the future. So communication of results is also very important for aspect of employee awareness because through this communication, you can show the importance of each workplace in chain of food safety and through presentation of results, you can start, uh, for example, one type of healthy competition that certainly have effects on awareness. Okay. What I would like to know from you is just one more question, just to make sure uh, that you are not the only internal auditor in your organization. The question is, do you know how many internal auditors are there in your organization? So if you can just set up the poll, Simon. Sure, I've done that, Vladimir. Uh, okay. How many internal audits? are there in your organization and the possible answer there's a range zero one two to three four to five six to seven eight to nine or ten plus um and uh we're seeing um 33 percent two to three auditors for 20 percent four to five auditors 14 percent have more than 10 auditors i guess um really without the context of how many P employees in employees. the organization. Yes, it's, yes. It's, um, difficult to say, but yeah. Yes, this this is this is uh, perfect. I, I thought that this uh, would be the the, the numbers. Uh, why I wanted to, to ask this question is just to know. Uh, in many cases, we have uh, just two or five auditors uh, and th this is not depending on the number of employees in the company M sometimes even the company with more than uh, 50 employees have only two internal auditors and this is something that I want to prevent here so uh, on this slide then the, one of the first things you should do is to define the auditors so this is perfect and maybe the most important step that uh, i can advise you to use for employee awareness in ordinary cases the process will go like this so you choose the employees with formal education and experience and send them to external training where they learn about internal audit process and then perform that in your company so now you have, for example, like five employees, team members, and internal auditors. And you use them for every single audit in the next few years. You just send them from time to time to refreshment trainings. Sometimes even, even companies doesn't do the refreshment trainings. So for me, this is not a good decision, especially when we talk about big companies with great number of employees. In small companies operating with up to 20 employees, things are a bit uh, different and here we can make some some changes but but here uh, in in this uh, part where we decide about auditors this is uh, I, for me the most important step also for affecting the awareness and for for this if we talk about also trainings for auditors what could you do is to use the knowledge gained on that external trainings where you send your employees and use your fresh 
auditors to train internally additional auditors. So with this process, you can train before each internal audit a number of employees and meet them with the procedure for internal auditing. And later, you can build auditor competencies. For example, before next internal audit, you choose five employees from different departments of the organization that already have some level of experience and train them to meet the process of performing the internal audit. After this, and after you train them, you can give them a status of observer auditor, for example. And on the next audit, they will be the second or third auditor in a team, but you can say that they are just observer who writes and asks no questions on internal audit. So in this step, employee is getting total overview of internal audit. Now you can decide that new auditor is ready and you can use this employee for future internal audit as an auditor. And for next year, you will just perform the internal refreshment trainings. And this is also a good place to affect the employee awareness because through this, employees will have more knowledge about your food safety system and they will be more familiar with different processing company. So also you will show them that they are needed for this important process of internal audit. So I would like you to just remember that you can use uh, any employee in your company and train them according to maybe your defined internal audit procedure, just to make them uh, known that process. But in the next internal audit, you can take these trained people as observers so they can learn the process of internal audit on site or through that process. Uh, they will not ask the question, but at the end, they will be trained completely to perform the audit on, uh, on themselves. So you can choose. Maybe they will go on one audit. Maybe later, later they will just uh, uh, go on some more auditors as observer. And this is something to decide depending on, uh, depending on your company. So the next thing. Uh, would be the planning of internal audit. So we define the internal auditors, we train the internal auditors, we also affected our internal auditors uh, with uh, some new information and also we will mix the internal auditors in such a way that they learn uh, not just the process but also through auditing the other processes uh, they will be aware more about the whole process and they will be uh, more aware of uh, the food safety system operating in your company. So with performed training, you will have auditors. And with big number of auditors, you will be able to have independence, and which is very important and main requirement of an internal audit. One of the main things to do in internal audit process is to define plan, and main things here are the criteria or, or scope and, of course, the time. So uh, criteria or the scope of the internal audit is also here needed to be uh, defined. It could be the, that you are auditing only one standard or few, or few standards. Maybe you are checking only some of the points uh, of uh, one standard or, or whole points. Maybe you are going to check just uh, one department or also other departments, also the time of the internal audit. Sometimes you could perform the internal audit because uh, you have some, uh, some uh, uh, problems in your company, like, uh, for example, some uh, big uh, withdrawal of products and you need to check all the system, for example, and you perform one internal audit to check only with this criteria or only with one scope. But the important thing is here to define the checklist and to select the auditors, maybe to perform some additional trainings. And a uh, plan for internal audit, uh, audit can be different, but in many cases it is consisted of the information about when audit is going to be performed, which department or sites will be audited, which criteria points of standard will be checked, who will be the auditor and who will be the auditee from, uh, from each department or location. 
and uh, duration of audit is also important to be mentioned. So it is very important to communicate the plan to uh, people that are going to be audited because uh, they can prepare themselves for the audit and also to organize their work time uh, to uh, wait for the auditors. Because if this is not organized, sometimes uh, it would be really, really difficult to perform the audit as, as uh, planned. So one of the things that is uh, very important here and I want to mention is uh, defining of a checklist for internal audit. And uh, this is possible after the criteria is uh, selected. And according to criteria, questions uh, can be defined. For me, some of the best option is to have a list of questions on one place for each point demand of standard. And you can refresh that list with uh, questions before each audit. So according to criteria, you can have checklists with different models. For example, checklists with just mentioned demands of standard, or you can have checklists with direct questions and even expected answers. So this is important, especially when you have uh, observer auditors or auditors that don't have so much experience in auditing. And you will need to introduce the auditors with the checklist and uh, all the specifics. So depending of the level of complexity in process of organization, time limits and further data evaluation, you can also choose different type of checklist as mentioned on this slide. So you can define checklists uh, that are going to be uh, filled on spot with handwriting or typing, or there's going to be only yes or no form to fill, or maybe it would be um, uh, filled electronically, like electronic form. So for me, the best option for beginners is to have some simple checklist that will have five to 10 questions for criteria that is going to be checked. Also in checklists, I would enter expected answers and during audit or auditor will check the yes no field and in case of no checked he will enter the recommendation or corrective actions so also i would recommend for beginners the handwriting checklist but for up upgrade even the existing software programs so why uh, i'm mentioning here the importance of a uh, checklist uh, the importance because if you train some new employees or uh, employees with experience to be a uh, new auditors they will need to meet uh, whole the process uh, through internal procedure they will meet the uh, process of internal audit, but through checklist, they will really engage in internal audit process and they will, in easy steps, learn how to ask questions because you, you can really write the questions like auditors will ask and also expected answer or, uh, for example, some expected document that will be shown as uh, as a result of the answer. So uh, defining of checklist is very, very uh, important point. Okay. <clears throat> Near the end, we are coming to the performing and reporting. And uh, so as you could see on previous slides, some steps in internal audit are to define criteria or scope of internal audit. And this could top management. And through this step, you can affect the awareness of top management about importance of eternal audit, but also of singularities of uh, food safety. Next step is to define the checklist and prepare the checklist that would be very easy to use. Selection of auditors is explained. And for me, this is the main step in building awareness of employees. So prepare the plan and communicate the plan so that everybody are prepared and internal audit is performed easily. Perform the audit and prepare the report. And also think about the type of report and communication of report to employees because this could also be the step for building of awareness. So we have few points where we can build awareness. First point where we are defining the internal audit process with our top management. Here we can communicate with them about the importance of internal audit and we can make them define the goals for internal audit and really be aware of this process and also about the food safety operating in our company. The next step, when we choose the auditors, we can engage 
not just the employee from uh, top management, but also we can uh, engage employee from different departments. For example, I worked in a, a previous company where we trained, uh, for example, IT uh, employees from IT department to go and to audit the uh, according to checklist to audit some uh, retail stores, for example, because we trained them, they were observers for a few times, and after that they were prepared to go on themselves as auditors. But with this, that uh, people from IT department became aware of a food safety operating company, but also aware of the things, how they should react uh, more uh, quickly and adequately to the questions that are coming from the stores, for example. Okay, in preparing of the internal audit plan, you can also affect the awareness and just to um, put it, uh, the importance of internal audit to all employees in company. At the end, after you finish the internal audit and you have the report, reporting, you can just uh, maybe make some evaluation of each de department and to show uh, some healthy uh, competition or, or who was the, the, the uh, greater in, in answering the question of internal audit or maybe you can really affect with the communication of internal audit to all employees about uh, improvements in food safety. Okay, I told you about uh, goals. And uh, for top management, we, we can define goals for internal audit. And you can define the uh, specific goals for performing the internal audit. You can, according to criteria, you can define just the specific. For example, I just want to check uh, specific things. It's like uh, the ordering and also checking of uh, work in uh, reception of uh, uh, reception of the raw material, or you can just focus on a one process defined in your company, but also goal for internal audit could be the uh, auditing of whole processes in company, or maybe you can even, uh, you can even uh, audit uh, one, one group in your company or one department. Company goals should be fulfilled and checked during the internal audit. So if company have, uh, uh, for example, five big goals, you should, of course, focus on these goals because through uh, internal audit, uh, uh, internal audit where you check uh, these company goals, you can be sure that uh, you have aware people of the company goals or maybe you don't have aware people of the company goals. Also, results of internal audit should have effects on revision of existing goals or defining new ones, maybe. And awareness goals, uh, so you can think about results of internal audit and do some of recommendations or non conformities uh, came from maybe low awareness uh, that you have in your company. So if you have maybe low awareness, internal audit, and this is something where you uh, where you can really really react. Okay, so we are coming to the end, and uh, I would like from you just to remember some of the things. Uh, and this is for internal audit procedure. So as we explained, you don't need documented procedure, but it would be useful if you are setting up the system for the first time, or if you want to meet the employees with the whole process. When we talk about audit team, you should build the internal audit team that uh, could improve employee awareness, use external and internal trainings just to help you, and please use the employees from different departments and different levels in that department so everybody can be trained to be internal, uh, to be in internal auditing team. Define the checklist that would be easy to use by auditors and introduce the auditors with the checklist through meeting or through training. And that checklist just uh, can be also written, but also can be in electronic form. But please use the checklist that would be easy to use by auditors, especially if this is the new auditors entering in the whole process. 
And audit plan at the end make a clear and simple plan that follows defined time schedule and goals for internal audit. So this is it for the end. Thank you for listening. And we can go to Simon and just continue with the, with the questions. I'm sure you have a lot of the questions. OK, thank you. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks very much, Thanks. Vladimir. Vladimir. Uh, I can uh, hear my voice back. Voice back. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Let's let's see. Um, it was a great, simple refresher. Uh, covered all, all the main points. So whether somebody's a new auditor or, or a, a, an experienced one, it's good to go back to basics and to see, you know, what we're trying to achieve and how to involve uh, involve more people. Um, so that we do increase that awareness, like you say. Um, a lot of people are asking, can I, checklist, checklist, template. It will be yeah, good to yeah. have a template, checklist. <laughs> I, I, see, I see the question. Uh, for me, what is the most important? First, before you define a checklist, just you try to, uh, for each point of, uh, for each pro uh, point, uh, uh, of the criteria that you are going to to check, uh, for example, um, for example, if you have some points of the ISO twenty two thousand, and uh, you don't have to just put this point in uh, in uh, checklist, you give that to auditor and he goes uh, to check. For example, point seven, you have to check prerequisite programs. And for him, it's not, uh, you know, uh, it's not important. It's not for him uh, very good how he can use this, etc. So maybe the easier thing would be if you take the point of ISO 22000 and you just put a simple question. For example, if you have point uh, of... Uh, Prerequisite programs, you don't put the prerequisite program, you put the simple question. For example, do you have, do you know, are you familiar with the procedure of uh, pest control? Please show me the procedure. So this is the question that you will use for this point of prerequisite programs, for example. And for auditors, it would be really easy that they can just read the question to the uh, audited uh, people and that's it. You know, yeah. so you can. Yeah, that makes that, that makes sense, that Vladimir, because especially in I in the world of ISO, the language is very technical sometimes. Yes. So it's yes. converting that into plain English, uh, for want of a better word. <clears throat> okay. Uh, right. Okay. Tadas is, uh, is challenging you here. He's saying, can you please explain where, where you got the information that internal audit procedure is not necessary in BRC and ISO 9000 clearly states that an if internal look, audit procedure. If you look at the points uh, of the ISO 9001-2015, you will see that there is no need for internal procedure to be written, you have to adjust information. But if you want to have internal uh, procedure defined, uh, you can have it. But it is not needed, as, and especially uh, said in the standard. Okay. Um, yes. Ernesto is asking, can you pay somebody from outside the organization to do the internal audits? Yes. Of course, you, you can pay somebody to perform the internal audit, but you also have to define uh, by yourself the criteria and to meet these uh, external, in, externally internal auditors uh, on which points they, they would do. Or maybe you can even um, have external auditors with uh, your checklist to check your system. Sometimes this process could be just given totally externally, if you want that. Especially, I mentioned the companies with a small number of employees, for example, 20 employees, you know. And sometimes they make a mix of uh, internal auditors with external auditors because uh, with that they can expect independence. 
Yeah, what, what you could do, Vladimir, just thinking about it, because that by outsourcing it externally, I guess that's losing some of the awareness of internal employees because you're just sort of handing it out externally. And so it's important yes. how you can still involve internal people. So maybe if you ex if you outsource it because of time constraints, maybe each time the external person comes in, you could have internal staff accompany them, different staff to accompany them, so that they can observe without actually doing any writing or work, so that they're yeah. Just, yeah. just listening and learning. Yes. OK. Uh, Laurie Lee is asking, how long should an internal audit take an employee? Uh, how long should an internal audit take an em employee? Uh, OK. Uh, you can have this is the question uh, and this is the question that I mentioned that uh, sometimes we have internal auditors that are for years internal auditors and we just do the refreshment trainings so there is no uh, some let's say things where you can say okay you cannot be anymore the internal auditor but uh, because of this you have to have refreshment trainings and you have to sometimes change the internal auditors because i think on on three years you have the internal auditors that are very familiar with the process very familiar with uh, the checklists and everything and for them it is it is becoming just the thing that they do each year so maybe yeah. you can consider the three years uh, to change the, the auditor. But this could be also performed where you have a, a, a great number of employees. Yeah, I think they do a similar thing with third party GFSI audits. You know, the same auditor can only visit, I think it is three times, I think. Then yes. they become yes. too, too familiar and friendly and get too comfortable, <laughs> maybe. Yes. OK. okay. Um, I think actually um, Laurie Lee might have been asking how long an audit should actually take to conduct, you know, how much time should it take to conduct? Oh, how much time? For example, uh, when I when we performed the, the, the audit, we just made for each department, for example, uh, like to, from five to ten questions depending on the processes that are important or that they are performing and with these five to ten uh, questions I think that auditor if the plan is sent on time and the uh, uh, other parties are prepared for the audit I think it lasts from from 45 minutes to one hour I think it can, it can be even faster performed, but uh, if everything is prepared uh, on time. Yeah, and, and that fits with Lorena. She's saying how often, but I guess small, li little, short audits and often is better than big, long. Ah, okay, yes, of course, of course. Uh, I uh, prefer that we have, for example, a bigger number of internal audits performed uh, one year. So sometimes you can perform the internal audit for one department or just one process uh, uh, in, uh, in first quarter of the year and second quarter of the year. You can do uh, other departments and some other processes until the end of the year you will uh, perform the internal audit for all uh, processes and points of the standard, for example, that is implemented. So you can do it like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, just going back to the checklist, uh, where people were asking for a checklist, checklist, checklist. Uh, Narong Chai has mentioned, which is quite uh, important. There are different types of checklists, especially uh, one that's standard based. Let's say, let's say BRC or something like that, and one that's procedural based. Um, so there are different types of checklists depending on what you're auditing, I guess. Yes, it's it's depending. So for me, um, you can you can define your own checklist uh, or the form of checklist. But uh, if you have the list of the questions, and for example, you just use this list of the questions, you just 
take the questions for each audit that you need and you can really simply uh, make the, 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 the fast fast uh, checklist and also uh, very fast uh, very fast uh, internal audit process. Okay, um, Olga is asking, do you need to audit the documented auditing process? If so, who should be responsible for auditing the auditing procedure? You have <laughs> external auditors that audit the internal audit procedures and uh, the process of your okay. company. Then you will have the external auditors go to your company and they will audit your internal audit process. Okay. Um. What uh, Imran is saying, what is the criteria to evaluate the performance of internal audit system? What, what is the criteria? To evaluate the performance of the internal audit system. How can you evaluate the performance of internal audit system? Okay, maybe you can, uh, sometimes you can use uh, numbering for each question. Uh, where you can have the evaluation, for example, of the internal audit uh, process. Sometimes you can uh, you can have the percentage of the of the internal audit uh, process at the end of the internal audit. Uh, if you count the questions and yes and no's, for example. Uh, sometimes you can just count. Uh, or define how many non-conformities or corrective actions or you can have in in the internal audit and also you can just uh, see the, the, the performance of the internal audit and there is a uh, lots of different I think points that you can use just to, to check the internal audit. Yeah, I suppose uh, one measure is that you've um, carried out all of the audits as planned against the schedule. Yes, that could be also uh, performed. Also, you can uh, uh, you can perform yes on schedule, but also you can see after performance of the whole audits uh, are all questions used on audits. Uh, does does the, the, the auditee are familiar with all the questions? Are all the questions answered? Uh, also, uh, are the checklists uh, useful? Do you have also, from the, can you make a good report from the checklist? Also, you can see if, uh, for example, some auditor answered no on some question or criteria, uh, we, what did he enter as uh, the, the, for example, recommendation or or corrective action. So you can see uh, through this was the audit performance good or or maybe it is it is poor. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, does a monthly uh, Danielle is asking? Does a monthly plant walk around count for an internal audit? Yes, I saw that uh, question, but it's it's a control of the uh, is the control of the walk around. It's not the internal audit because you are not getting in all the processes that internal audit uh, needs to be performed. You only check one one uh, point, and that's the point of the uh, production and maybe reception and uh, maybe the safety of employees and hygiene etc but this, this is only one part of the internal audit maybe you can count it as the internal audit in one quarter but you also have to perform for other uh, departments and other processes uh, additional internal audit just to have all the points covered okay uh, Ernesto is asking, can we use our GFSI third-party audit as an internal audit? Okay, maybe you can use uh, maybe you can use some points of the GFSI uh, huh, as an internal audit. Well, be better not. Uh, better you perform your internal audit before one GFSI audit. Uh, to make sure that you are prepared for that. 
Yeah. Maybe it's better that. But you can use the, the points that are uh, proposed by GFSI uh, to check in your internal audit to see are you prepared for sometimes you can perform the internal audit before a uh, great or one audit just to make sure that the the uh, whole processes are prepared and that everything is on place like like preparing audit internal audit yeah i know quite a few people what they do is they take for example let's say the brc standard and they yeah. Um, audit make that an internal audit and throughout the year uh, they they risk assess and they take certain requirements and say well these are more si uh, significant than others and they say well we'll audit this clause or this section four times a year we'll audit this two twice once and then if you do do that uh, throughout the year then you're continually um, testing yourself against the BRC requirements and then you're all always uh, ready for the external audit which is um it's good uh but it's not um there are it's, it's important to stress isn't it vladimir there are lots of different types of audits yes of course are lots of different types you can uh, uh totally about your um uh, totally about your production so if you have uh, lots of locations it's if you have a uh, great number of employees etc uh, etc et uh, you will define the internal audit in totally different aspects you know and sometimes internal audit will be performed with uh, your and engage even external uh, companies or auditors to to help you in this process but uh, the most important thing is that you can through this uh, internal audit really um, uh, really check your processes in company but also you can uh, for example uh, affect the people in company to be prepared for example in, in next uh, next uh, or to be prepared for some external audits or third-party audits etc okay uh, Nicole uh, is asking about a third uh, do we have a, a sample of a third-party vendor audit uh, template about that so uh, we're actually going to be scheduling a, a webinar um, related to supplier quality assurance, supplier auditing in the future. So um, maybe you can look in, into that, Nicole. Uh, Laurie Lee is asking, uh, during an internal audit, how do you decide uh, whether it's uh, the corrective action it needs to be just a, a simple fix or a, a proper written corrective action? <laughs> that, that is a question that we can make uh, another uh, another presentation to to explain it, you know. Uh, but uh, for the first point, you need to train your employees on what is recommendation or what is uh, corrective action. So uh, here you can use the simple thinking of uh, what is a minor nonconformity, what is a nonconformity, and also what is recommendation. For example, if you uh, have all the, if we talk about, for example, for traceability and someone of auditors are checking the traceability system uh, of, of your uh, raw material. So if we have the traceability system with uh, all things checked and uh, with all documents set uh, and with uh, uh, all raw materials that is marked etc and we that we don't have for example some uh, some for example uh, arranged document that is explaining the process but the pr process is really operating and it is working and we have all the forms that needed to be filled but version of the document explaining the process is not uh, is not uh, changed according to other documents that this could be for example some minor non-conformity but you have to teach your auditor what is a minor non-conformity but for example if in this traceability we don't have marked uh, raw materials then we don't have traceability and it's a non-conformity 
So you have to perform some really great actions. So this is, we can speak about a lots and lots of different uh, types of uh, uh, non-conformities, etc. And you just have to uh, teach your auditors through some simple examples how they can they can see this. Great, thanks, Vladimir. Uh, Imran is uh, asking. What is the criteria for the assessment testing of internal auditors' level of auditing? So once an auditor is trained and they yes, they for example, you can you can yeah. evaluate the the auditors. For example, the first point, as I explained, you can train your auditors, and uh, uh, you can train your auditors. And when you train your auditors, they can be observers. For example, for next internal audit process. Uh, after that, they will totally learn the process of internal auditing. Next step could be that they are you you put them to be the internal audit, and you send the, the for example lead auditor just to check them through this process and to see are they performing good audit, uh, are they for example asking the questions in in right manners. Uh, or, or are they using the checklist or going around the checklist? Are they feel, uh, noticing the recommendations or some corrective actions, etc.? So you can really evaluate this. Maybe you can perform also the training, and on the training records, after uh, a while, you can check or also evaluate your training of the auditors. This could be used. But you can find a lot of uh, uh, different different types. Maybe after uh, after finishing of the internal audit, you can ask the auditor sides to evaluate the auditors that came to them. Maybe they can do that in simple few questions. Yeah, I think a good a good tip uh, in my experience is uh, to regularly have uh, uh, maybe monthly internal audit meetings where the internal auditors gather together and share their stories and ideas and, and yes, uh, they cal calibrate each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, let's see, uh, Aquilio is saying, what do you suggest for creating checklists so they are not so overwhelming but manageable? I think, uh, we've, we've cov I think we've covered that in saying that audits are better probably small and often rather than big. So rather than having a 10-page audit, have 10 one-page audits. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, let's have a look. Right, I think we'll, we'll uh, we've got two minutes, uh, but I think we've, we've answered lots of questions. You're getting, I'm sure you're getting rather tired and you've got revision to do tonight for your <laughs> exam tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what we'll do is we'll say thanks very much, Vladimir, for your time you, today Tom. and sharing your knowledge. And take all the listeners and thank you for the questions. Also, so please, I'll go to the to the site and just put all the questions that you need, and I will I will really uh, look into it and try to answer all of the questions you have. Okay, uh, well, we'll be doing a web another webinar as mentioned on supplier quality assurance with you soon. So we'll uh, you'll be seeing Vladimir again soon anyway. So thanks very much for today. Okay. Cheers, Vladimir. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Right. Um, that was good, uh, very enjoyable, and uh, lots of engagement and interaction with the audience, lots of questions. Hope you pick something up from there that you can take back into your organization and use practically. Uh, like I say, if you do have further questions, go to the discussion forum and uh, continue the discussion. I've loaded your certificate in the sidebar. You can uh, download that now. Um, if you don't get that today uh, for any technical reason, don't worry, within 24 hours, we'll be sending you the video, the presentation slides, and the certificate by email. All registered attendees will get that. We're back in two weeks uh, for food safety horizon scanning with uh, Ian Wright from NSF International. So we've got a break next week. So apart from that, as we say every week, uh, thanks for your attendance. Uh, it's Friday. 
enjoy the rest of your day have a great weekend and uh, we'll speak to you soon take care